FitWit's coverage of CES 2017 is brought to you by Fractal Design, MSI, and CableMod. Check out the links in the description below or Half-Life 3 will stay unconfirmed. Guess where we are? This is the Designo Curve MX38 VQ monitor. Actually, that's just a bunch of text on a wall. This is the Designo Curve MX38 VQ monitor, and it's pretty beastly. You can see it's uh, an ultra wide display. It's a uh, LED IPS, so really good for color correction, makes all the colors pop and stuff. It says it's 29, tw 21 by nine um, aspect ratio, but that I, I think that might be inaccurate uh, because if you look over here, it says the resolution is actually 3840 by 1600, which actually gives you a little bit more vertical space than a typical 21 by nine display. So I, I think Paul said he was gonna call this, uh, start calling this um, ultra wide plus. So I'm, I'm gonna steal that for this video. Look at this ultra wide plus monitor. I know, he's gonna, he's gonna hate me. Um, but you can also see here, it's a 37.5 inch. It's got uh, some built-in eight watt speakers. Some people like that sort of thing. There's also an audio chip built in, so uh, it handles all the, uh, the post-processing if you wanted to uh, get your sound out of that in that such way. It's also got a wireless Qi charger. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, actually, at the base, the base of it is a built-in wireless charger right there. I know it's spelled Q-I, but I believe it's pronounced Qi. Uh, I don't even know if this phone's on. This, this phone was already here when I got here. Oh, there it, there it goes. So um, that's actually pretty cool. I, I feel like when I'm at my desk, I usually put my phone right kind of on the base anyway. So now I can charge while I do that, assuming, assuming I ever get this monitor in my studio. But uh, there's another cool panel over here. I think you guys are gonna really like this. First off, just check out the industrial design. It looks pretty stunning. This is the ProArt PA. 32UQ, it's a bit of a tongue twister, um, but this is a uh, 4K display and it is 32 inches, 16 by nine, so we're talking a bit more of a familiar aspect ratio here, but it's a quantum dot panel that's not just 4K, but also HDR supported with Adobe RGB. You can take a look at some of the specs here. Um, it's 85% of Rec 2020. I'm still getting familiar with all these numbers and what exactly they mean. I'm sure some of you guys could probably help me out on that. 99.5% of Adobe R RGB, so it's gonna be really great for content creators. And you can see it's also got Thunderbolt 3, DisplayPort, HDMI on the uh, video IO, which is pretty sweet. This thing is, um, I don't know, I, I hate actually recording videos of, of products like this because it's just impossible to show you guys how amazing it looks uh, unless you're actually here in person. But it is pretty stellar, even just comparing it to the LED monitor over here, which is IPS again, which already looks fabulous. It looks amazing. And you just look over here and you're like, but I want this one. This is the one I want. That quantum dot with the HDR uh, gets us really, it's getting me really excited for um, premium HDR content in the near future. Hopefully we're gonna be seeing that come mainstream in 2017. Let's move on to see what else they got here. All right guys, next up we've got some motherboards here. This is a Z270 board, um, ROG line of course. We've got the Maximus 9 Apex. And what uh, good old JJ was telling me about this board is that it is for the most enthusiast of enthused overclockers. So this is basically an overclocker's wet dream, especially if you're trying to break some world records. Um, this is actually what probably the board they're gonna be using at the hardware bot um, overclocking contest that's gonna be going on during CES. So that's definitely saying something. You can see it's got two dim slots. Uh, adding more dim slots does add some interference when you're trying to hit some high high frequencies. And you're probably wondering what the heck what the heck this thing is. This is actually a dim M.2 adapter. So it's actually a, a, a regular dim slot, but they've rewired it to uh, fit an M.2 on this little board here. So you can just mount it right there. Kind of a clever and interesting way to mount uh, some, some, some high speed storage. Uh, in your on, in your case. We've also got this little thing here. They wanted me to point this out. This is kind of like a, just a little plating. It's purely aesthetic, but you can customize it however you like, um, just simply with a, with a straight razor. This was actually done by hand. No like laser etching fancy work. Um, someone just did this with a straight razor. I think they did some, uh, they traced over it. So you can kind of make the board your own, which is pretty cool. And for further customizability, you've also got full blown RGBs all over. Um, there's, there's definitely no shortage of that, and that's of course controlled and tuned in the Aura software and it syncs with any other Aura compatible uh, components you may have in your system. Pretty sweet. So just how we took a look at the Apex and how that was really great for overclocking, this is a board that you want to get if you're a really high-end custom water cooler and you just are looking for the most extreme solution. In fact, that's probably why they've called it the Maximus 9 Extreme. And uh, the, I think the, the first glaring thing that sticks out is this massive water block that actually covers not just your CPU, 
but uh, your VRM as well as an M.2 drive that you can put right under under this part of the block that says extreme. So you can water cool your M.2 drive uh, with this, this entire setup. And this is included, this whole block is included, and you can see there's an inlet and outlet here. The cool thing about this is if there's a leak in either one of these, these uh, at these ports, um, it'll actually auto shut off the entire system as to prevent any kind of further damage from occurring, um, which is pretty awesome. It's all built in, good to go. Uh, now you'll also take a look at some of the fan headers here. There's a, a just ridiculous number of fan headers, and they're actually, there's 12. Paul, 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 Paul says there's 12. There's 12 fan headers there, Kyle. I assume you already did this board, Paul. No, and I'm waiting for you to finish so I can talk about it. But, but you guys come watch my video where I talk about and say all the same things Kyle's about to say. Chris, Chris, make sure you edit out all this part with Paul, all right? Okay. All right, cool. Bye, Paul. So, so, so according to Paul, there's 12 of these fan headers. What's really cool about them is that they're actually grouped. So um, these are primarily for radiators. So you actually have, let's say you have a 480 at the bottom of your case. You plug in to these four. They will also, they will all act pretty much the same. You want, th want them to have the identical um, RPM, things like that. Uh, all the same fan curves. There's also a group of four up here. Um, so if you have multiple radiators in your system, just connect it to those grouped fan headers and you're good to go. There are four pin PWM, all the good stuff. There's also in independent fan headers scattered throughout the board uh, if you just wanted to connect some, some basic old fans. Uh, I don't know the price point on this board. I believe, I would have to assume it's gonna be like six, 700 at least. This thing is just an absolute monster. So again, for the best of the best who are looking for extreme water cooling solutions in the rig. All right, so you guys know how fond I am of Mini-ITX boards, so when I saw this one, I kind of got all giddy inside and screamed like a little girl. Uh, this is the Maximus 9 Hero, boom. And uh, this is part of the Strix lineup. It's not an ROG board, but when you take a look at it, you don't really feel like they've compromised for much of anything. Um, of course, you've got your typical two dim slots and your, your by 16 right there. But if you look at just like the, the craftsmanship and the heat sinks, they are freaking beautiful. Again, this is one of those things you have to see in person, but they are etched very nicely. The shapes are, are, are pretty on point. Look, they even fit a USB 3.1 internal motherboard header right there on the corner. That is pretty awesome. And if you're wondering what this is, this is actually a cover plate for your M.2 uh, drive. There's an M.2 slot right here. Uh, there's, they actually put it separate here, separately right here. You can kind of see that uh, there's a space for your M.2. And there's a thermal pad on the inside so you can cool your M.2 as well. It's both form and function. So even if you have a really nasty, ugly ass M.2 drive, you can just cover it all up while giving it a bit more thermal dissipation than you otherwise would without it. Um, I kind of like the fact that they've switched over not just M.2s from behind the motherboard, they've, they've put it to the front, and they've also made a nice elegant solution for it. I almost forgot to mention, this board also has an RGB LED header. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me at the ASUS booth here at CES 2017. They have a lot of amazing stuff here, but I really wanted to just be super precise and only cover the things that I really thought you guys would appreciate. Let me know if you like kind of the shorter format or if you want to see all the things in the, in the next video. Uh, but until next time, get, get the hell out of here, Paul. Get, just, he, you can't take him anywhere. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, huge shout out to my sponsors, MSI, Fractal Design, and Cable Mod. Go ahead and check them out in the description below. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.